Hello, and welcome to Channel 36 and my show, Sensational Hot Nights. And we're all excited tonight because I have a wonderful guest, a sex therapist, and she's lovely, and she's right beside me, Moshumi Ghosh, right? Yeah. And I could call you Mo, <clears throat> correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. I have so many things I want to ask you, <laughs> so many things, because you have such an interesting vocation, but first of all, I want to talk about fetishes. Okay. Okay. Sure. And why does a man want to wear a diaper and hold a baby bottle? <laughs> right. 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 Of all the fetishes, oh, yeah, right? Right. Right. <laughs> sure. Sure. Well, there are. There really are so many fetishes. I mean, there's. They run the gamut, and who's to say why something develops? I believe that because children are sexual beings. Um, at the time of their sexual development, which is probably, you know, somewhere between the ages of five and, you know, 12 or 13, uh -huh. there was some sort of conditioning, some sort of pairing that creates that arousal. And as they go through life, that memory sort of stays with them and it, it sort of Is it like a through. security blanket? <laughs> More or less. Well, in it's, way. I think I want to say it's some. In, it's it's actually in, opposite of secure. It's okay. something that makes people a little bit anxious because anxiety in and of itself can be pretty arousing. Oh, okay. So it's it's there's just so many. It's really hard okay. to say. Would, would this person get embarrassed, or this person wouldn't be embarrassed by that? Or something like that. What That's do you think? Such a great question. I think that there is a lot of shame around sexual fetishes. So I would say that a lot of people would get embarrassed now. A lot of people come to terms with their fetishes and find socially acceptable ways to express them. So that's what I, that's kind of what I do is try to help people develop a more positive outlook okay. Um, okay. about their fetishes so that they can express them in a way that's socially acceptable to them and consensual with, you know, like two consenting adults. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, in a way it does. You know, <laughs> and it depends on the person every time, right? Yeah. All the yeah. time. So if you have and a weird fetish, or something that other people consider to be weird, you know, bringing it up well. with your partner um, <laughs> might seem scary. Well, I'm laughing. I have another one. Okay. Because I heard some people like to be put in coffins, like a man likes to get into a coffin. Mm. I mean, that that is really way out. Don't yeah. you think so? That's kind of like almost like a feel. It feels like there's an obsession with death in that one. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Well, he sure doesn't get claustrophobia anyhow, that's for sure. So he likes to have sex in the coffin? He wants to be in the coffin and have the partner open up the coffin and get him out of the coffin and then have sex with And then he has mm. a Dracula outfit on. Oh, okay. Very interesting. Yeah, there's so many fetishes these days. You hear about people wearing, like, those furry costumes, and they find that. There's just a lot of different types of fetishes, and I feel like more and more people are coming out with them because it's becoming more acceptable. Okay, and how about manger toi? <laughs> Threesomes. <laughs> Threesomes. Threesomes are okay. like are like the 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 sex act or the sensual act du jour these days. I feel like everybody <sighs> wants to try a threesome. Okay, tell me. Do you think there are more women that come in and ask you to do this? Uh, I mean, ask you about it, or more men? Um, it's really hard to say. I wouldn't say that there's um, one gender that prefers right. it more than uh -huh. the other. I definitely I have seen my share of both wanting it. I feel like people hear about it and it piques their interest. I think. How do you make someone comfortable in a menage a trois with three people? Right. How how would I mean, you? I threesomes in in general are awkward because yeah. there's jealousy and insecurity. Yeah. Right. Well, that's something that I <clears throat> I do like to help you know people work through is is one of the main things about when you're going to bring a third, fourth, fifth, sixth person into your relationship uh -huh. um, or into the bedroom. Um, there needs to be guidelines and rules. Like know. anything else, of course. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So if you're in a, a relationship Boundaries. with a primary you have a primary partner and you two decide we're going to have a threesome with this individual, you come up with some rules beforehand. Like, well, you're allowed to kiss, but you're not allowed to have intercourse. You're allowed to give hugs and you're allowed to kiss everywhere, but you're not allowed to kiss on the mouth. Well, do you get a lot of ground rules like that? I mean, are there a I, lot or do you have people say to you, I don't want any rules. I just want to do what we feel at the moment. I think that going... A lot of people want to be spontaneous, and I get that's, that. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's people what I want that spontaneity. Yeah, yeah. But 
Okay. Trust me when I say that if you go in with just a few ground rules, it's going to make it a little bit easier. It's because it gets messy in there. There's a lot of emotions. One person might feel left out. One person might start to feel je jealous or insecure if the other person's spending too much time with the, you know, with some with the third person. So addressing those beforehand, I feel like can sort of, you know, soothe some of those in the moment. How about marriage couples? when they get the third person into the thing. Do you have a lot of married couples that come mm -hmm. in? Absolutely. And they want some excitement in their life, so sure. they've never done it before and they heard about it and they want to try it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just not just threesomes, but even um foursomes, foursomes um swinging um polyamorous lifestyles which is um being able to date outside of the primary relationship, or outside of the marriage within certain rule, you know, having certain rules, honesty, consent, um, bringing up emotions and feelings. There's so much emotion connected with this. How about, uh, how about like a menage a trois, but I know there's three people. How about if you get five people or six people? Have you ever had that? Like an orgy? <laughs> That's basically well, like a high a class group, orgy or group, something like group that. Sex, <laughs> group sex. Group sex. Yeah. Um, what's most number of people that you've had in a group sexual thing or an orgy? Me, myself? <laughs> no, that you've helped. <laughs> that I've helped. Well, I... No, I didn't ask you that yet. No, I, <laughs> okay. I have... I usually treat an, an, the individual as a unit that I treat, okay. and I have treated couples, um, and I've treated a few threesome situations. Okay. Um, and that includes husband, wife, and child, maybe. Um, so, but three is usually my max. I haven't That's gone over three. Yeah. Okay. There's something else I want to ask you. And you told me this before that you have, because I asked you when they come in and how do you get this thing going, you know, and you apply everything, but mm. you said you have a sex coach that does this, right? So that you work with a sex coach. Are you, ta also? Are you talking about the surrogate partner? Yes, yes, the surrogate partner okay. that comes in mm -hmm. and does that. Yes, so a surrogate partner is somebody that actually gets intimate with the client. So I'm a therapist, so I sit in the office in, in a room very much like this. Okay, and, excuse me. Yeah. So the surrogate one actually shows but gets intimate with the, with the client to yes. show how it's done? Yes. Interesting. Yes. In, okay. And they work in tandem with a sex therapist. Okay. So that means in between every session that the client has with the surrogate partner, they then have a session with me. Okay. So it goes surrogate partner, me, surrogate partner, me. So that they have a, a time where they can process emotions, feelings, anything that comes up in the surrogate partner. Does session. anyone take any notes? I believe lots of people <laughs> <laughs> would and should. Yeah, definitely with something like that yeah. or, or tape it or uh, you've heard the Masters of Sex on television. Have mm, you heard that? Love that show. Yeah. What, do you do anything with the wires like they do? No, they were sex researchers. So um, Masters and Johnson, they were real. Okay. <laughs> so there's um, a different, there, you see, there are all these different type of professional people. Yeah, yeah. Sex uh, researchers mm -hmm. and then the surrogate, mm -hmm. uh, the sex coach and everything. But I think some people think you as a sex therapist do everything with your people as you're trying to show them in that when it comes I, to sexual things. I get things. that. I get that yeah, a lot. Right, that right. we, oh, oh, do you have sex with your clients? And the answer is no. Right. You know, we don't take our clothes off, period. Right. Um, uh -huh. You know, we're therapists. We are bound by certain, you know, ethical, ethics and laws. So um, it's it's mostly talk therapy. I, I might assign the couple homework that they can go and do themselves, you know, in the privacy of their own okay. home. You, as a young lady and a very attractive woman, what made you go into something like this? What excited you uh, to pick this vocation? Sure. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I have always been very open minded, non judgmental. Um, grew up around the gay community, very, very immersed in the gay lesbian community. Okay. And when I came to Los Angeles, I was living in San Francisco prior to that, when I came to LA um, and I did my graduate studies here, I was a little bit um, sort of, not shocked, but 
I, 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 apprehensive of going into this. Well, I like recognize this that there was a need, that there wasn't that sort of same fluidity, sexual fluidity that, right. that there is in a very small pocket of San Francisco here in Los Angeles. And so it just, I sort of just fell into it. A few of my close friends said, Mo, you need to be a sex therapist. You know, and I was already studying to be a therapist. And one of the things that they, you know, recommend in the program is find a specific niche. You know, Wait, what's your niche? What's which your you niche? did, and you're on your way, and she has the book out. Mm -hmm. Well, writing a book called what? Marriage. So I did. I released an ebook in 2011 called Marriage, Money, and Porn, and okay. it was basically a guide. It's basically a guide for couples, and I address like the top 20 things that I see in my office that couples come okay, in with. Okay, something else. Sorry. Speaking of porn. And the people that get in your office, do the people say to you, I need to watch porn in order to get excited or it makes me get an orgasm faster mm -hmm. when I watch the porn and mm -hmm. then we do it? Sure, sure. I mean, again, it's kind of like what we were talking about before. People develop a fetish and sometimes they might develop something that sexually uh, prohibits them from connecting with their partner. You know, so if uh -huh. they need porn um, in order to get aroused, but their partner is not getting them aroused, then we might see it as a problem. But if they need porn to get aroused and they're having a great, fine sex life, norm, you know, with their partner, then we might not see a major yeah, issue I with mean, it. I mean, that's right? okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it's really up to the client to decide if it's a problem or not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, can you name some other, getting back to fetishes, some others that you have encountered? Other fetishes yeah. that I missed. <laughs> um, I, there was one. There was one uh, client who um, used to really get off um, calling all the different sex toy companies on the phone, and having them talk and describe all the different dildos and vibrators they had, um, because he liked them to hear. He liked them to say the word penis, okay. and he would get aroused every time they would say the word penis. Interesting, yeah. interesting. But, you know, part of the type of sex therapy I practice, it's like sex positive sex therapy, which means that we, the emphasis is on consent, consensual sex, and uh -huh. consensual practices in sex. And so something like that where the person on the other end doesn't really know what's going on doesn't really fall into that. Uh -huh. so. Now there's something else. Let's talk about orgasms, okay? Um, do a lot of women come in and say they fake their orgasms? I've had women say that. But... Or that they're not orgasming. How does the man really know? The man really doesn't know, does he? The men might not know. But I think it causes the women a lot of distress. That's why they show up at my office. Yeah, for some help. For some help, yeah. Definitely. Now, yeah. I also want to ask you about anal sex. And this is what I heard. Everybody talks and they have their own opinions, right? <laughs> yeah. That people do anal because a man does anal and he likes to do it because he doesn't like women. What oh, do you think of that? No. And that's wrong? I, you know, again, it's a preference thing. I definitely think that a lot of men like anal sex just because they like anal sex. A lot of women like anal sex. You know, it's it's a preference thing. A lot of heterosexual men like anal sex. A lot of gay men don't like anal sex. You know, so again, it's a yeah. matter of preference. It's no a matter, matter of preference. Yeah. yeah, and I I I really like to get rid of the stereotypes that people have about these types of things. Too much. Too, Too many. Too much yeah. at all. Yeah. And then we were talking before about uh, the toys, the sex toys. Mm -hmm. People going in, they're still embarrassed society the way it is still embarrassed to go into the store and yeah. they don't want to talk about yeah. it you know yeah. i did a but workshop once um and then after the workshop we took a field trip over to the pleasure chest right, which right. is also here in west hollywood and um you know that everyone was really you know was just kind of spur of the moment how does everybody feel about going to on a field trip to the pleasure chest and everyone was so excited about it because it was something that they didn't want to do on their own Okay. So I realized, like, wow, that's something, you know, we could do field trips going to the sex store. You know, nowadays you can buy everything online, but... It makes it a little bit easier and yeah. everything. Yeah. But um, your office is in West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And your rates, tell me something about your rates. I mean, what so, yeah, do it's people a, pay? Do you get mostly for an hour, a half hour, or... Yeah, I do. It's yeah. it's a, it's one fifty for a 50-minute session. Okay. Now, do they come in and say, I need help, 
or do they ask the price right away? Or they come and say, you know, I, I really need help. Can, can you really help it, me? It, it varies. I mean, some people call and say, how much is it? And then they, you know, they're, they can't afford it. And I always tell people, you know, if money is an issue, you don't have to come weekly. Like there's right. a lot of people think with therapy, you need to come weekly. I will work with your finance, finances. Even if you come once right. and never come back, you can gain a lot from, from one okay, session. Okay, tell me, do they get desperate when they <clears> come in? I think by the time they like, ha they seek out a sex therapist. I mean, so, when I they mean, come in, like yeah. me, if I came into your office, honestly, I wouldn't know what to say. And I'm usually not lost for words, but I wouldn't know how to react, really. Mm -hmm. And I would be very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. How would you make me feel comfortable? Right. So one of my goals is to help people get comfortable in talking about sex. And one of the things I let my clients know is you don't have to talk about anything until you're ready. But my door is always open whenever you're ready to ask me a question or want to talk about something, feel free, shoot away. Okay, but if I said, well, I'm comfortable, but then nothing comes out, mm. how would you help me? Well, I would um, ask you a series of questions. I have, you know, several different types of intakes that I my do. My sex life? Yeah, I might ask you about your sex life, your masturbation life. Oh, yes, let's talk about masturbation. <laughs> your, or, your orgasm life, oh, you my know, God. just different things. Who taught you about sex? When was the first time you kissed someone? Just to get the conversation flowing. Yeah, to get it flowing. Well, you yeah. know what they used to say about masturbation years ago. Oh, they still Evil do, Evil and right? things like that <laughs> through the generations and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not healthy. And, of course, they used to say that about sex, too. Yeah. Because people never talked about sex before. Mm -hmm. And now it's so open, which is just wonderful. I just yeah. love that. Yeah. It's getting but open. Slowly but slowly, surely, yeah. yeah. Slowly more, yeah. So anyhow, the masturbation, we talked about the orgasm, uh, anal, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, is there, do they come in and ask you about the different positions and everything? Which sure. is the best, you know? Sure, which, for example, I'm pregnancy is a, a, a huge concern for people. Like, how can I have sex with my wife if she's pregnant? You know, or how can I have sex with my partner if I'm, you know, eight months pregnant? You know, you can. Yeah, I heard that because men are afraid to get near a woman. They're yeah, afraid they're going to yeah. hurt the baby. Yeah, yeah. So it's just communicating with your partner. That's a huge part of my work, I feel like, is okay, teaching people. Okay, another thing I want to ask you is, you date. Mm -hmm. I know you date. And I was at talking to her before we started the show tonight. Mm -hmm. um, you're a lovely young lady. How does the man feel when he's with you? He has to either have confidence or not, or else he feels like, oh, nothing's going to go wrong because she's the teacher and she's the expert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm setting myself what? up for okay. failure. <laughs> okay. From, has, what has happened in yeah. some circumstances when you were dating? Anything you know, funny or I, I, comments I, from a man I or would, what? I, you know, I'm sure there are men that, feel maybe tim intimidated by it and they probably don't even approach me so I don't really know. Um, do you deal with, do you date people in your business? I have. Mm -hmm. It's probably more comfortable then when you date people in your right, business, right? Right, Yeah, it helps because then they have a more sex positive I, attitude right. and I don't have to teach them that part of it. I'm usually not going to be attracted to somebody that doesn't really have that already anyway. <laughs> I keep thinking about that all the time. And you you have your doctorate. No, I have a master's. You in have a master's. Clinical psychology. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about your parents? What reaction of your parents when you went into this? <laughs> well, Mom and Dad, how did you I say it? I just want to be a sex therapist. I didn't That's tell them that. I no. um and you know you flowered to, to this it around day, a little they, bit. To this day, they um they believe that sex therapy is just a marketing technique for couples therapy. Okay. You know, which is true. In a lot of ways, yeah, you know, uh -huh. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and so you can't deal with couples in marriage without dealing with sex. Right. So that's sort of how I, you know, phrased it to them, and they've accepted that. And you do sex talk. I love that title because, you know, she's on the YouTube and she does the videos and yes. everything like this. The Sex Talk Series .com and it's myself and um, an actress uh -huh. that also is the co-host with okay. me. And we just talk about everything sex, and we give advice and tips and okay. stuff like that. You get average people coming, <clears throat> professional. Do you get any celebrities? I'm not going to sure. ask any names. Now. Don't worry. Sure, I'm bound you by can... I'm bound by client. You know, 
confidentiality. Their confidentiality. But absolutely, you can't have a practice in West Hollywood and not see celebrities. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, you know. I know. More male you or just female. just walk outside and they're, they're everywhere. You so. get more male or female. Um, celebrities? Mm-hmm. I've gotten both. Gotten both? Mm-hmm. Okay. Are they more kind of aggressive more than the average person or like the average Joe that comes into your office, you know? Do they react the same way? Um, I, I don't think so. Not more aggressive necessarily. No, no. Um, but maybe, I mean, it, it depends. There's all kinds. Okay. Now, tell me something else. Am I missing anything else of fetishes or something different that I don't know about that I should know about? <laughs> Hmm, that you should absolutely yes. know about. Yeah, something that I never heard of before. Okay. Or anything like that. Okay. Um, well, one of the things that I talk about a lot is um, this concept of like marriage and how it used to be till death do us part. You obey me and that's it. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think that okay. people believed that there was going to be one person that they spent their rest of their life with. And I think now we're moving into a time where people are, are beginning to recognize that that's not always realistic. So you have to share. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and no. I think that's oh, why boy. that's why we do see a lot more serial monogamy, but we do see higher rates of divorce. And people feel a lot of guilt and shame about divorce when they really shouldn't. Why do people get bored with each other so much? Do you think it's mostly sexual? No, I think that it's biological. I think, th- I mean, there's actually some studies that have been done. Mm-hmm. Helen Fisher, PhD, she's done, she's written a, a book called, oh, I can't think of the name, but anyway, Google Helen Fisher. Okay. And um, Why We Love is the name of her book. And she basically has done all this research on the fact that um, we stay with somebody and are, are in love with somebody long enough to raise a child, you know, 10, 12 years, and then... And then when they're gone... It's already, yeah. Things start so getting empty. So it's kind of like, and yeah. And it's kind of like our mind, our eyes start to wander. So there's some... That's natural. Then. Yeah, there's some biological component to it. And then some could control and then some cannot. But I think... <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But right. I think as you grow, you learn. Some people grow apart. Yes. Yeah. And I think some people, as they get older, want that excitement, right? They want that thrill, and they want to try it out, you know. And that's when the cheating goes on. Sure, sure. And, you know, if you're not growing together and you're growing apart and you stay together still, you could become stagnant and prevent yourself from growth. So I think part of the work that I do is trying to help people recognize that there's nothing wrong with when it's time to say goodbye to someone, saying goodbye amicably, having a healthy breakup. Uh Uh-huh. Boy, that's hard to do. God. It is. You see so many older people after being married 40, 50 years, they get divorces today. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. The children grown and everything, they want to experiment or mm-hmm. they feel like they're missing something. They want that mm-hmm. chemistry, that hot chemistry, mm-hmm. that sexual and thrill. they need to grow, you know. You know? It's, it's like on the dating thing. They want to feel that, they mention that chemistry all mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. I want to feel it. Mm. You know? Yeah. You didn't ask me about online dating. What do you think about well, online dating? Well, this is dating? why we're going to talk now about <laughs> online dating. Well, what honestly, do you think about what it? do I think about yeah. it? Okay. I think a lot of people get their thrill, and I think uh-huh. they orgasm by talking to people on the phone. Hmm. That's the way I think. I mean, so couple, you, there's a lot of like predators out there. They're predators. Oh. But no, this one person that I, I, I heard about was not a predator, professional person. And uh, I heard this is what he does. He was predatory. Well, whatever <laughs> you want to call it. <laughs> and you know what it is? They, they get the thrill. Mm-hmm. Number one, no commitment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Number two, nobody knows what they're doing. They could be married. They could have mm-hmm. two wives, mm-hmm. whatever. They mm-hmm. get their thrill. After that, they could have two, three women a night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And daily if they want it. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to find someone on the dating yeah. thing. Well, do you? Are you well, on the dating I, thing? I don't use online dating, and I feel like it is. it came a little bit after my time. Okay. You know? And so, for me, there, it feels a little bit disingenuous now. I do always recommend my clients who want to get into dating and get out there to maybe go create a profile on one or two of those free sites. Just 
to send out the message that they're ready to start dating, but right. not necessarily that they're going to meet someone on that site. Yeah. I believe in the old school way of meeting people, like through friends, through work. Oh, that's the best way, but you that's know? hard. Yeah. I mean, unless you collide with someone in a market or something like that, then it's right. an entirely different right. story. Well, and then I but, encourage people to be more social and to get out there more, and that way you, you do increase your likelihood of meeting I know, more people. But you have to pick mixed selections, you know, and everything, yeah. but it's like anything else. Uh, you are very fascinating. I mean, I could go on talking, talking, talking forever. But being on the show has been a wonderful, wonderful blast. I'll say blast. And I'm learning. <laughs> Thank you so much. You learn each day, Mo. That's for sure. And, uh, oh, another fetish real quick. Yeah. And then I have to end the show. Okay. Otherwise, <laughs> forget it. That's it. Was the handcuffs everyone knows and mm. the roughness of mm -hmm. that were... People like the fetish end of it, right? Sure, where sure. Where women do that, you know? Yeah, S&M. S&M, &M, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. and Those are okay. re really popular yeah. um, nowadays. Um, ideally with rules. Right. You know, definitely consent between consensual adults uh -huh. with rules yeah. and guidelines. Um, but, yeah, go for it. Enjoy. Okay. You know, find someone that shares the same... Uh, fantasies and fetishes as you and go to town okay one more thing yeah. french kissing the tongue the tongue the tongue absolutely how to necessary use the tongue. <laughs> how to use necessary it necessary or unnecessary uh, absolutely necessary necessary so oh, what yeah. does it do? couples what? that kiss are more likely to have sex so the tongue yes does it the titillates tongue, the yeah. body oh, yeah and you're exchanging saliva you're exchanging, breathing, each, you know, oxygen. The breathing, that does if it? If there's, um, I think I've read before mm -hmm. that when you're kissing a man, a female kisses a man, there's actually testosterone exchange, which, which can lead to I ask you, mm -hmm. it's the breathing, I think, that gets the excitement going and yeah. everything. What do you do? But if the tongue is all over the place and not in the mouth, and comes in the mouth at the end. <laughs> Remember the rules. Communicate. It's it's okay to communicate. It's okay to say, it's okay to have boundaries and say this. Is, I'm not comfortable with this. Or if you're gonna do this, please do this. If you're gonna, you know, lick in areas that might not be so sanitary, can you go brush your teeth before we make out? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> okay. ask you. There are areas when, you know, you you want to lick. <laughs> say. <laughs> You the, want a the man's penis. Okay. Or some people might call it a lollipop. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, if my parents were around or something like we would use lollipop or something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't want to do it at that time, it's very hard. How You don't want to be insulting to the partner. That's the most difficult oh, thing. Right, right. And that's hard. Yeah. That's really hard to do. Is it something that you're just not interested in doing, or is it the specific moment you no, didn't want to do No, it's the moment. It's the person. Oh, it's the moment and the person. Yeah, it, okay. it would be the moment and the person. Yeah. What would that make would... it better for you? Uh, not for me. This happened to, again, a friend of mine. Okay, okay. And uh, I'm asking you, what, what I mean, would that if, person do? If somebody likes to have um, oral sex and they want their partner to be clean, I think it's perfectly okay to say, I would really like you to go wash up, and then, you know, I'd be more than happy to have oral sex with you. Uh -huh. um, How about impotency? A you know, man is impotent. Oh my God. Yeah. This is hard. It's well, really, you it feel happens. bad. And, it, and, and it happens, honestly, and it's actually a normal part of sexuality. Yeah. Yeah, sexuality ebbs but, and flows. But it could be exhausting. It can Trying be. to get it, you know. The man sure. hard and sure. everything like sure. that. So don't yeah. focus too much. Uh, don't focus too much on having an erection or trying to get him to have an erection. Focus on all the other things that are exciting things and arousing. That might so many, him so everything. many. That we we focus too much on erection and intercourse and orgasm. There's so much more to sex that we can enjoy. Oh, it's touching and feeling. Yeah, and it's all touching that. and feeling. There's so much Which more. Which arouses mm -hmm. everything too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's having the hard sex and just going and doing it. Right. You know? And really, but the true enjoyment of sex is when you're totally relaxed and present with somebody. And if you are experiencing lack of arousal or impotence or something like that, it could indicate that you're just not relaxed in the company yeah. of that person yeah. and so taking a step back and you know and learning to enjoy being with that person can really help yeah it's like anything else definitely yeah, yeah. okay yeah but anyhow thank you for being on the show thank it you so much just 
Wonderful, that's for sure. And uh, my idea, when I thought about, you know, I love to have a sex therapist mm. on. I haven't had that because I have questions myself, and I think the people would like to hear about it because people have sometimes wrong ideas, and here's a lovely lady. You never know. She could be a secretary in an office. <laughs> never know. You can invite her to the nicest family where they're be really careful. religious. <laughs> be careful. That's it, or be careful. <laughs> Look out. I don't know what you say. Look out. <laughs> but anyhow, maybe we'll have you on again. Oh, that would be what's wonderful. Going on it was too. so much fun today. Love you. Thank you for coming on Channel Thanks 36. for having me. And uh, I hope you had a good time. I had a good time today, too. And, Mo, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure, Lorraine. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, thank you. See you again. See you soon. And come by. Okay. See us again on Channel 36. Bye. Bye. <laughs>